All right, brother, how much money do you make? About across all the offers and businesses, about 500,000 a month. A month. Mm -hmm. So like 6 million a year. Around there, yeah. That's pretty good. There's obvious oscillations. And the problem with me saying that though is a lot of people are under the assumptions it's a 100% profit margin, which is just not correct. There's about 47 people on the team across all of the businesses. So it's not a 100% profit margin. How do you do it? So let me give you an explanation of how the whole thing works in the first place. This will help people understand. So the offers are around helping people grow their B2B companies. How do we do that? By teaching them how to do outbound marketing. What is outbound marketing? It's sending cold emails, sometimes doing cold calls, doing cold DMs, a very large portion of which is cold email. So here's a problem with that. We have one offer where it's a consulting offer. We have a software offer. We have a course offer, and then we have other low ticket products. So you have a software business, a course business, and the actual, do you say agency service that you provide? Or yeah, no? so we, we do a little bit of done for you for some people. We also have a recruitment arm where we will place outbound marketers in other people's companies and coaching program gotcha. ask as a part of it, yeah. But it's all centered around cold email, essentially. Pretty primarily. So that's yes. like the vertical is the cold email world. Mm -hmm. But not only did you get good at it and help companies with cold email, you then made a course teaching other people how to help companies with cold email. Then you were naturally using softwares within that process and you might as well fully vertically integrate and make those softwares yourself. Yes. Okay. So I don't know, I, I don't know how long you've been on Twitter, but in about 2020, I made a course called cold email mastery. I sold that to about 8,000 people. It was probably pirated by another 50,000. Probably 80% of every single person you see putting any form of information online about cold email is directly from me or a dissemination of somebody I taught it. Basically everybody. Because the resonance that that course hit was so wildly astounding. Basically every <laughs> advice ever given on cold email is something disseminated from me. Now the problem when you sell a course to that many people and it gets pirated that many times, is I was instructing people to use specific software apps. You have to use this app, this app, this app, this app, this app. So what I did was I decided that's really dumb and I should capture all of that revenue. So basically, there was a two-year span where I was just replicating every single one of those. It was, I think, six in total, and I'm only running one of them now because it just turned out to be the best one. That is called List Kit, and that is what hit 100,000 a month in 90 days. And the last time I checked about two hours ago is 125,000 a month. Congrats, because that's awesome. And that's just so intelligent of an approach. So let's start with the course, because you're still selling that course, correct? Yeah, it's a 2.0 version, we okay. changed it. Okay, okay. But let's go ahead and start with that first course sale, because that's probably your first taste of real money. Mm -hmm. Like you probably made good money with the agency before that, but this is like the business that most people could probably learn the most from, from you, because mm -hmm. you crushed it. So first off, you had the idea for this cold email course and you proved that you were good at it. That was like foundational. You have, you can't skip that part. You have to be great at what you fucking do. Mm -hmm. Now that you decided to make that course, what was your like strategy of when you're making it and then bringing it to market and actually selling it? All right. So what I, what I was consuming hella Russell Brunson content. Love what him. does Russell Brunson teach? Building a funnel. So what, what was my, the original objective behind this course was to funnel people into the agency service. Mm. However, just so turned out, I'm one of the best info marketers on the entire planet. <laughs> so it just did a stupid amount of revenue very fast. I think the way it worked out was I made this Twitter account called Cold Email Wizard. I still run it. It's like 132,000 followers as I'm filming this right now. And all I did was make threads and teach people what was already otherwise inside of the course anyway because this is the reality of the situation when people purchase things from you what they're actually they're only purchasing two things it's either facilitation and in the instance of a course it's permission and people don't understand this it's like, oh i gotta i gotta put this in the course and this in the course and this is course. a lot of times what people are actually looking for is permission and this can be evidence so if you're ever consulting so i guess no you're all in the marketing sphere too. And a lot of times what people will say, they'll come and ask you a question and it's like, should I do this? And it's like, what do you think? And they go, yes. I'm like, yes. So you weren't actually asking me for the advice. You were asking me for the permission to do it. So there was, I rem this was so funny. I always hated, I bought hella courses. I hated when there was just like fluff, 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 fluff. It would be like an hour long video to say like, 
three sentences and it just pissed me off so much. Systems and processes. Yeah, yeah. You always hear that bullshit. So, so when I made this course, legit was like 30 total minutes and it was just loom screen shares of click this button, click this button, click this button. However, the intro video of it was like me yelling in the camera. I was like, <laughs> Here's what I'm going to do inside this course. I'm going to tell you to do this, 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 this. A specific category of you are going to try to get cute and change what I'm saying. Oh, what if I try this? What if I try this? What if I try this? Nope, already did it. Listen to me. Don't try to get cute. Do exactly what I'm telling to you. The second category of you are going to look at all of it, and you're going to go, oh, I don't know if this is going to work, and you're going to get all inside your head, <laughs> and you're going to not do anything, and then you're going to get upset about the fact that nothing's happened. And the, it, it, and the reason why nothing is happening is because it's entirely your own fault because you're not doing anything. So simply don't be both of those people and do exactly what I'm instructing you to do. Exactly. And I don't know what it was. They put, no one's ever bought a course and had someone just like scream at them in the, <laughs> yeah. in the first like five minutes. Yeah. They were probably like, oh, okay, I understand what's happening here. And then it didn't make them angry about the fact that it was like 30 minutes because it's like, dude, you didn't buy 70 hours of content you bought the specific end result that you're trying to get to acquire clients with cold email. And it just worked. And I, I didn't know if it would work though. I was scared to put that out. But when you get like that resonant feedback from the market, people are like, oh yeah, this, like, dude, this is so good. This is so good. This is so good. And I think the only reason it did work was because it was so short. Because if it was 70 hours, the rate with which people would complete it would be so astronomically lower than if it was just 30 minutes right? Because you have two hour YouTube videos, mm -hmm. you have 20 minute YouTube videos. Which of those gets finished in entirety more? Obviously the 20 minute ones. So I figured my objective here is not to just make the maximum sales of this. It's to get the maximum amount of people to actually facilitate it. And that is more important now due to the fact that I'm vertically integrated in the, in the entire industry. Because if I get more people to do it, you will, it increases the probability that you will buy more of the products, particularly the software, which goes into the fact that how many people on the planet do cold email, let alone do it correctly. It's so small. So the explanation of how this funnel works, because it's really just actually one marketing campaign. So we have low ticket products. You can buy our best performing scripts. You can buy recordings of our sales calls so you can get better at sales. Mm. You can... You can buy inbox management training. You can buy cold email mastery. Then you can buy list kit and then you can join client ascension. And then you can also become a done for you client. Right. So why is it structured like that? Where effectively we're just creating cold emailers because if we want to sell list kit, the software, the only people that buy list kit, the software are people who send cold emails actively. Mm -hmm. So we must create more cold emailers. Instead of, oh, how many, uh, let's go find the cold emailers over here. Let's find them over here. No, just make them. And this is so funny to me. You, you, you see a lot of SaaS companies and it's how do I get my, how, how do I get my more users? How do I do this? How do I do this? And you can try to go scalp them from other locations on the internet, or you can try to make self-liquidating funnels that just create your TAM in the first place, which is exactly what we did. And obviously is working hilariously well. So you're almost selling new business opportunity, trying to get people to believe in this business model. Then you're taking a lot of accountability for the results. And so your sole focus was, I need people to take this. I need them to actually get good at it. So then they can buy my software and then stick around because software is all about monthly customers paying over and over yes, again. Correct. And so with the course, your goal is fully outcome focused and the fastest time to value possible. Yes. And that do you think I'm interested, just real quick question on how many referrals that the course got itself. How many like sales came from referrals versus just your Twitter account? You have, I, you might not have that data, but if you had no, a guess. No, I don't know. But what I do remember is um, it was when I first launched that, it was so, it felt so like a market piercing. Like the, the, the resonance it hit was so extreme. And the best way to describe this is, um, you're on Twitter and there's a little money Twitter community, right. people doing business, whatever. And before I came out with that, it was all about like drop shipping stuff. And I'm like, oh, drop shipping is a bad business. One, <laughs> I think it is. Two, some people do have good success with it. I, I agree. It with does you. work. I agree with you. But um, it, it was all just, it was all dumb shit. It was, it, it was a bunch of, it was, it was trading. Like, let me, let me try to day trade my way to a million dollars. business models that sound sexy. Yeah, it wasn't a business. And I, like, I would always like talk shit to these yeah. people. It's like, day trading is not a business. It literally isn't. Um, 
now. <laughs> it's not. Now, when it came, when, when I launched it, it just, like, it just works. It just does. But, so just touching that is you had the strategy. I'm going to make this course. Then I'm going to start a Twitter account. And then I'm going to just give all of the sauce on Twitter for free and then funnel people into this course that isn't necessarily about the information and the fluff and motivation, but the course is just straight up the information you need to do this job. And that's yeah. what people really want. They want the implementation. They mm -hmm. don't need the mindset. They don't need the fluff. But maybe one video to fucking hype them up and yes, yell just at them. Like a singular <laughs> yeah. five-minute yeah. rant will, will do the trick. I think that's a big trap for course sellers to think that uh, selling point is we have 10 hours of course material. Like mm -hmm. how, look at how much we are going to learn. When yes, precisely nobody cares how, what nobody the quantity wants, is. You actually want it to be as short as possible to get the outcome. So yes. I think that's spot on. Yeah, well, it depends on your business model because if your entire business model is selling the course, you might fall into that trap. Well, let me make it as long as possible to once they're inside, decrease the chargeback rate. Mm -hmm. I just have a more extensive business model where I have a financial incentive for you to actually complete it in the first place. Interesting. Okay, so I want to talk about one more thing you touched on, and that is the selling the, the top, the front end offers, the really cheap front end offers. How much are you selling those for and what were they? So we got cold email scripts, and this is a cool funnel. It's, you can select multiple different script packs based on niche. Mm. So you can, if you want to buy like, they're all $20 each. So you can, $20. You can okay. select three, it's $60, and then there's order bumps. And then after that page, there's a one-click upsell to cold email mastery. Cold email, email mastery is the course? Yes. How much is it? Four ninety seven. So five hundred dollar cold email course. The front end is gonna be twenty dollars minimum. And that is just gonna be like six different emails that you how many emails is a script or is it one single? So it's it's a, a script pack is yeah. based on a niche. So like for instance, e com. And then we throw a bunch of different offers in there. So it's like if you're trying to sell uh, Facebook ads or or TikTok organic or TikTok ads or Clavio email marketing, we just put a bunch of offers inside of it. But how many emails would they get per pack on average? So one offer is going to have an A-B test of an email one and then five follow-ups. Okay, so they can go down to basically 10 or you're saying just two and then five? No, so the, the way you want to structure it is you're going to A-B test email one, right? Yes. And then each one is going to have follow-ups beyond it. So here's one offer, A-B test email one, then... The staggered follow-up. So like four days later, what do you send to them if you don't get a reply? 10 days later, what do you send to them if you don't gotcha. get a reply? 30 days later, what do you send to them if you don't get a reply? In each of those, there would be the A-B test, five follow-ups for each offer. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. What's yeah. the order bump then? The order bumps are, one is the recording of the sales calls. That's $49. And mm. then there's the inbox management and the positioning of that is, okay, you're going to get responses now. But the responses are never just, yo, let's hop on a call. Yeah. It's, it's, well, now's not the right time. Or, well, let me talk to my partner. Or, or we already have somebody for this. How do, you, how, do you, how do you handle that and actually get them on the call to increase the, problem, to increase the results? Do you teach uh, like authority building or trust building outside? Like obviously when cold email, I think a lot of people think they can just send emails and then people just magically see that email. And they're like, this is great. And that's how cold email works. When in reality, they see that email, they probably read half of it and just start looking into who you are. Yes. And go out on yes. the internet. Exactly so is that like what's taught in the course or where is that? Yeah. So what, what, what I do for every, I, I don't even, I don't even really mention it on the landing page, but what happens is I'll tell you about the strategy. It's so good. It worked so hilariously well. Um, hey guys, we'll get back to the video in just a second, but first I have a quick question for you. Have you ever dreamed of running your own e-commerce business, but felt overwhelmed on where to start? If so, you're not alone. Luckily, there's an incredible platform called Zendrop.com that solves this exact problem. Zendrop is the ultimate springboard to not just start, but to thrive in e-commerce. No more guessing games on product sourcing or dealing with inventory hassles. With Zendrop, you select high quality products, add them to your store, and they do the rest. And you'll get a seven day free trial, 50% off, and $200 to fulfill orders for free. Their team will also personally create your very own store with winning products to kickstart your e-commerce journey. They even have weekly coaching calls to answer all of your questions and help you get up and running in no time. Zendrop's platform is designed with you in mind, making it incredibly simple to launch and scale your e-commerce business in one stop shop. Thank you Zendrop for sponsoring today's episode. What I do is it's, you don't even know what's going to happen, but well, obviously you do now, but <laughs> an hour after you buy, I send them and I'm like, I'm about to put you through a five-day course that I didn't tell you about. It's called Seven Figure Rev Ops. 
And what I'm going to do is explain to you how to formulate an offer that people actually purchase because you all think you have a good offer. Oh, my Facebook ad, I would do your Facebook ad. <laughs> no one's buying it from you. It's just not going to happen. How do you position this correctly so that cold traffic gives you money? That is an aspect of it. So I kind of started off with Lamborghini offers. That's what I call it. And what I mean by that is there are three components to an offer, right? There's the promised result. Like what is, what, what is the raw quantification of what I, I will receive? Then what happens if I don't get the result? So the risk reversal, the guarantee. And then what is the evidence that you have done it before? Now, the problem mm. with a lot of people with a substantial portion of them is that they have precisely zero evidence that they've ever done it before because they actually haven't. So how do you mitigate that? And how do you maneuver this to actually get people to buy from you? And the answer is always that you need to have a risk reversal. Now, how do you do the risk reversal without, well, what if I do all this work for the client? And like, how do you maneuver <laughs> around that? You see what I mean? Yeah. So it's about the positioning of that. Then it goes into, okay, now you're sending cold emails. Here's what happens when someone gets a cold email for you. The first question they're asking, are you a scammer? Yep. So how do you answer that question? You copy the sending domain, you put in the address bar, what happens, where's it go? It goes to your website. Is there a video sales letter on your website? Like what? what At least what's, a picture of you. Yeah, what's the copy on the website? Yeah. Do you exist yeah. on LinkedIn? Do you exist anywhere on the internet? And the problem that I explain to a lot of people is if you don't have these assets or just don't exist on the internet at all, precisely zero humans on the planet will ever give you money. So it's basically, again, the same positioning of you need to listen to what I'm telling you. And if you don't, this will never work. And not just to make your engagement with me a good engagement. It's if you don't listen to me, nothing you ever do ever for the rest of your life will ever work. <laughs> so you can, you can be, if you're not getting results with I've provided you with right now, one, it's because you're being stubborn. Two, you're not listening to me. But, and, and, and if you're not listening to me, you're going to be upset. But I want you to know it's your own fault <laughs> because I'm correct. <laughs> Everything that's I'm how saying. You, that's how you need to sell. Like, be undeniably confident in your ability, and you're just like shaking this person. Like, dude, it, it works. Dude, I've done it a hundred times. It literally is correct, though. <laughs> yeah. Like, dude, I just made a rant video on this, and I was telling people it was on YouTube, and I was telling them I was like, there are so many of you who want to sign clients so bad. You want a three k, four k, five k a month client, and you want this so bad. But the reality of the situation is that if you want somebody, a client, with their own business, with their own money, and you want $5,000 of that per month, and you don't know how to make them more money, you will just never sign clients ever. And I don't, people are so confused about this. I'm like, why do you think somebody pays you $5,000 per month? What is the function of this? And they'd be like, I'll ask people, what is your offer? It's like, oh, well, I'll write, I'll, I'll, I work with e-com brands and I'll write their emails. It's like, oh, no, 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 no. Let, let, let me rephrase this to you. I'm, I'm the e-com brand. I'm going to ask you, I work with you. What do I get? Emails. No. What is the function of the emails? It's to make more revenue. Now, the problem is if you don't have the skill set and expertise to write and design emails that actually drive revenue, there is zero purpose for me to work with you because I don't purchase emails. I purchase more money. And every single human on the planet presented with the opportunity to put $1 in and get $5 out will click the casino button infinitely. The problem, if you can't sign people, is they're not confident in your personal ability to multiply one into five. So that's the issue we need to work on. You have to learn the skill. You have to prove that you've done the skill. You have to prove that you can make them money. And if you can prove that you can make people money, you're going to make money yes. all day. And I think a lot of people, I always use a simple op like over uh, simplification with like a pizza shop. Like if your goal is to make a pizza or to make money selling pizza, but you need to make it now, you're going to put up like a white table on the corner with a bullshit sign that says pizza. And they're not even going to see the pizza. Like the pizza is going to be behind your back. And mm -hmm. why would anyone buy pizza from you? Or are you going to go to the building that's really well polished, huge sign? You know, they have to pay $5,000 to rent this place. There's seven people in there already. You're going to go to that one because you, it's pretty, all the subtle signs are like, okay, this guy definitely makes the pizza and it's good. Yes. And now, so, now, now you're a marketer. So you understand that the, the, the more you position that you're going to get a higher result for less work, it, it's going to increase your conversions. So like it might even be an ad on this very video you're watching right now. Somebody might come on an ad right now and say, here's how you can, here's how you can make $30,000 per month in just 30 minutes per week from your couch. 
<laughs> and there's going to be some percent of people who are going to take that. They're going to click that out. They're going to go, oh, wow, this is my savior. Oh, I'm going to do it. From God. And, you, and you got psyoped. Because <laughs> yeah. and like, here's the reality of the situation is the amount of work, particularly in the beginning, mm -hmm. when you know nothing, the amount of work studying and just content and practice you need to exert out into the world is so wildly more than you actually think it is. And I remember sitting, I've, I've done every business model. I've done Amazon FBA. I've done drop shipping. I've tried to make e-com brands. I've done agency. I've done courses. I've done SaaS. I have sold almost every single conceivable business model that you can think of. It, I, I sat, when I graduated college, I sat there for 10 hours a day watching YouTube videos. This is what I did. Within, not, not like, oh, he, he, here's my ad on how you can do this. Like, like really studying. Like Who? Alex Becker, Sam Ovens. Alex Becker, Sam Ovens, Ty Lopez. People talk shit about Ty Lopez. Ty Lopez is good content. Legend. We yes. live the same life, yes. by the way. It's very. We have lived the same life over the same yes. age. Yes. Taylor Welch, all, all of these guys, bro. And like be, trying to actually be good at the, and even books too. People don't read anymore. It's like, if we were, if we were, if we were to take, you need, you need a vast array of capabilities to get anything done. So let me, let, let me give you for instance, you want to make a web design agency, right? And the problem with people who want to make a web design agency is they think if they make really good websites, they're going to sell a lot of websites. However, it's incorrect. <laughs> no. So what you actually need, you need to know how to build a website. You need to know how to drive traffic to the page. You know how to, you, you have to know how to do outbound marketing to get the leads in the first place. You need to know how to operate a sales call. Like there, there, there's so much shit that has to occur. Like you have to know how to do everything. And people think of, oh, if I just, if I just get really good at copywriting, I'm going to, I'm going to sell so many copy clients. It's like, no, 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 no. I don't think you understand. You have to know how to do everything. And it doesn't mean the universal skills of business. Yes. Like Colin. It, it doesn't mean you're a jack of all trades. It means you're minimally viably competent. So every time you try to do something or it's, it, you have your web design agency, you don't have to go hire a lead generation agency for $5,000 per month. Because now the entire function of you making a service business in the first place was to, was, was to not have to use a shit ton of capital by a product business, like spending $6,000 for a bunch of inventory of product, which was the first business I did. It's, it, it, if, if, if you don't have capital, you must use your time. There, there's only two resources. You, you have time and you have money. It, so you, you need one or the other, and it's substantially more than you think it is. So like, let me give you, for instance, if, say you're running ads, and the problem with, if you tell someone, hey, uh, you're trying to sign a $5,000 per month client, probably what's going to happen is you're going to have to spend about $5,000 on ads to acquire that client. Now, the problem is someone might go, two issues, some one kind of person is going to run up an ad campaign and put it at $50 a day. It's like, okay, it's going to take 100 days for that to work. The second kind of person might put it at like $300 a day, and four days later, they're like, oh, I haven't got a client yet. I'm going to turn this off. Which is, you didn't do what was necessary. You did, you did not follow instructions. Or for it, now, let's, let's say we want, to do, we want to do cold email. We, we want to do cold outbound. And I tell someone, you're probably going to need to email about 1,000 prospects to to get a client for this, you're gonna to need to hop on about five to eight sales calls. If you've never done sales in your life, it's probably about 10. Problem is they start sending cold emails and it's not working or they get on three calls like, no, this isn't working, but stop. You did not do what was required. You did not follow the instructions because it's easy, it's easy for you to conceive of the fact when I tell you it's gonna take you 1,000 emails or I tell you it's gonna take $5,000, it's easy for you to conceive of this. Oh, that's very simple. Until you are individually experiencing it. Until that's happening. It's not it, fun, dude. Yeah, and you, can, and you can sit here and you can tell someone what you need to do. I guarantee you, every single person who's watching this who has very absolute bare minimum skills, if I tell them you need to go learn copywriting, you need to learn outbound marketing and cold email, you need to learn how to do sales. You need to learn how to build landing pages and you need to learn how to do automations like Zapier. You need to learn how to do content marketing. I tell them, you need to go sit here and research all of these for 30 hours each, 100 and, 180 hours. And they say, oh, 180 hours until, un, until I have a 10K a month business? Yeah, easy, until you're on hour eight. And then they just stop. 
And so, again, you did not follow instructions. You did not do what was required because you're too busy scrolling TikTok. And it's like, bro, that's all you need to do. And it's actually so simple. It's astounding to me that people just will not follow directions because they'll, they'll, they'll say they'll do anything to get a client. I'll do anything to be a 10K a month. I'll, I'll, I'll do it all except study for 180 hours. Or spend a week in a Facebook group. Or yes. Sp- like it, it's, it is a lot to do. But the second you actually see each piece and you see all seven, it's like, okay, if I can do all seven of these, then I will be successful. So in theory, all I have to do is all seven of these and I don't get to choose how much time it takes. It just has to be done. I can tell you've taught people before because of the passion and like the anger that's coming out of like, I can tell it's coming from a specific conversation you've had too many times with people. So many, it's the same <laughs> thing. Over and over it's, and it's, over. Yeah. It's the same thing, bro. Every, every single person on the planet has all the same problems in the, in the exact same sequence. But the interesting thing is the problems that you're talking about, it doesn't matter what your product is. It doesn't matter if it's an agency. It doesn't matter if it's a course. It doesn't matter if it's a software. You have to hit all seven of these principles for that business to work. Mm-hmm. And so you have to learn all those skills. Sure, you can be the best at web design and that's the product, but still you need web design for your own business mm-hmm. for your web design business. And then there's marketing layers, there's psychology, there's sales, which are completely different, but they all interline. And I think you just have to put reps in. But I think we got so lucky with the courses and the content from like Alex Becker and Sam Oven. So now Al- lucky. People that have Alex Ramosi now, mm-hmm. fucking you should be way more successful. So way more quickly. lucky, so lucky. Like, Oh, dude, it's so cool that we had YouTube. That's why all these 20-year-old millionaires exist now. Dude, it's you know, really cool to see. You know what's funny about courses is I always love this. Um, people go, oh, that person just sells a course. Now, here's the thing about courses. People buy courses. So this is the problem. People go, why is everyone selling a course? Because people keep buying the courses. Like, that's why. I remember one time someone goes, when I was selling um, Cold Yo Mastery, they go, oh, I bet you're only in this for the money. And I go, I go, let me explain this to you. I am specifically in this for the money. I, I literally would not be here at all if it did not involve money. That's the entire function of this. It's a business, bud. Yes. Now, you shouldn't, like, if you don't know, if you don't know anything on earth, like, you obviously shouldn't go sell a course because it's going to come, it's, it's going to come back and bite you. Typically, what you always should do is go gather a vast array of skills. You should go sell that skill as a service. You should get results with that service. And then you can sell a course to either a past version of yourself, or you can sell it to prospects who you want to create your market for, for your upper offer. Exactly what I'm doing right now. So I never sold make a cold email lead gen agency. I did for a little bit, but then I stopped. And I was like, this, this is not what I want to do. I want to create cold emailers so that they can, one, purchase the agency service, and two, buy the software that I'm creating. Okay, so your funnel is going to be, we talked about those front-end, cheap, not cheap, but low-ticket front-end uh, templates. Then there's a slight order bump to get sales scripts or some more context. Then they're getting ascended into the actual $500 course where you're teaching exactly everything we just went on a 10 minute rant for. Yes. And then once they're like prepared for that, they naturally have to use software tools. So you built the software tools around them. Yes. Um, I do think it's very interesting that you started six because that seems like a lot of businesses to run, but I fall for that same thing. I tried six, one. Yeah, but one, one worked. Yes. And this one that worked, do you want to explain what it is? Yeah, so it's list kit. And what that lets you do is, let's say for instance, that you are selling a service or an agency service to an e-commerce brand and you want to do cold email to get these people. So how do you get the email addresses of the e-commerce brand owners? Well, you simply go to ListKit, and what you can do is you can filter leads by the technologies that are either their website is built on or are installed into their website. So for instance, let's say you want to go sell Clavio email marketing. It makes sense to go pitch people who, one, are using Shopify, and two, also use Clavio. So what you can do is you can do a technology filter, Find me all of the websites that are built on Shopify and also have Clavio installed on them. Okay, bam. It's, you're going to get about 700,000 that have both of those. Now, but you want to filter them further. So, like, what if you only want to sell to larger companies? I don't know. Let's put it at 10 to 100 employees. But then you only want the decision makers. So, let's filter these results further down and say we only want the CMO, CEO, founder, co-owner, president, VP, and all of those, director of marketing, whatever you want, all of those. So, now you have... it's there would probably be like 90,000 of those with that, maybe a little bit more. 
Now, what you can do is you have this giant search, you click next step, and you tell the software, I want 10,000 of these people. And it goes, okay, click the button. And now what's going to happen on the back end is if you ever sent cold emails before the problem with it, if you use another app, is other apps will give you that list. Now, problem is 40% of them are just wrong. They're just not correct. Like the emails are just absolutely incorrect. And if you email them, you're going to get a bounce. When you get too many bounces, then you start going to spam. Yep. Your domains get burned and just it, it, it screws up the entire infrastructure. So what we do for you is we verify it three times. So we use other verification software and we just do that for you. Because previously when we were running the lead gen agency, we had a stupid amount of done for you clients. What would happen is you'd have to extract these lists, put it in a Google sheet, take the Google sheet, upload it to an email verifier, take the output, put it back into a Google sheet, remove the invalids, then take the catch-all emails, put it into another verification service, take the valid from those, append it back onto the Google sheet, then download that as a CSV, put it into your sending tool. And when you are doing this a lot, it's a lot of work that's completely unnecessary if you just automate the process. So we made ListKit, we're like, let's just automate that process. So that's exactly what we did. All of that happens at the back end. You only get the verified emails. When you buy credits, the credit only applies to a verified email. So you got, I mean, that's the definition of software. Mm -hmm. Streamline problems, save people time yes. and compile it. So that's genius. And so that's gonna, one, that's kind of how you differentiate it from your competitor. How, obviously, how, I want to ask you just how did you get this idea? I assume it's pretty obvious. It's like... It was, it was a problem that already existed. Is already, so you yeah. saw another company, I'm, I'm not going to say their name, but you saw another company already doing this and you're like, we can do that exact same thing, offer it to our people since we have traffic and then also solve a few more problems to differentiate ourselves. And now it's at over 100K a month MRR, which is like a, probably over a $10 million business if you wanted to exit. Fucking great job. That's so smart. So I wanted to ask you then, how did you actually think about... Uh, growing the software independently from your vertical integration. Have you thought about that we yet? use Outbound. Outbound? We use Outbound. Exactly what and you a, teach. And again, dude, I'm, I'm on such an advertising kick right now. It's so great. It's, it's, it's hilariously, like, to sell the software, we have to talk about how good Outbound is, which, which is, is a, like, and I'm using advertising to sell it, but I'm also using loop, Outbound. Right? Yeah, dude. Full loop. Dude, we're sending, like, we're sending so many cold emails for it right now, and we're booking, like, 15, 20 demos a day. I think every course seller should be thinking of it like this. This is Russell Brunson's new book. By the way, you should read it. Every one of Russell. Yeah, yeah I've, I've already read it. And it's so smart that you are going to use a course as a self-liquidating offer to get people into your software. Mm -hmm. and But you're selling the business opportunity. And so it's like every single person as a software company should have a course because yes. then that makes your ad spend free and your lead gen free. And then you need a content creator to be the hero, as he calls it. Yes. But that is like the face of your brand, teaching people this is the way to make money. Oh, and then suddenly use our software, like drop shipping. I don't know if Shopify came up with drop shipping, but the reason that Shopify is Shopify is because there became this whole niche on YouTube, 5 million people searching a month, yep. the term drop shipping. And every time you drop ship, it's through Shopify. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if they came up with that, but that was a huge It would have been the single best marketing campaign of all time. Of all time. It would have been great. And dude, this this is actually really funny. We've been talking about this. Um, so previously, like way back when, it was not good when someone would make a competitor like they have their own cold email course or cold email coaching program, whatever. Now it's getting to the point where it's like, oh no, it actually is good if ListKit is inside of it. Mm -hmm. so, so now you start to maneuver exactly. away from that where it's like, not only are you creating your TAM, you intentionally create your competitors so that it still funnels mm -hmm. back to it. It's so funny. Because you have to have that software regardless. Mm -hmm. Like it's not like you're like throwing in an extra. It's like, if you want to do this, you're going to use these softwares. Mm -hmm. Should be ours. Yes. And you already know it's proven to work. So that's genius. And it's so incredible that you saw that and took action, which no one does. So mm -hmm. good shit. <laughs> you, I think that's going to be the new meta, especially with like no code tools and building software. How did you go about getting the software built? It's, it's not no code. It's, it's, Bro, it's, we have a CTO, his name is Oliver, and he lives in Portugal, and he just handles all that, bro. I'm not a tech guy. I mean, <laughs> I, can, I can maneuver my way around Zapier and like put some head tracking codes and you know, do a little bit of HTML. I'm not, I can't do that. I can't. So you just found a guy that can Yeah, I cannot, I cannot maneuver myself around and you a have database. The, and you fun. leverage the traffic to basically, yes. to like say part of part I'm on the it. Russell Brunson. You yeah, yeah you're the hero. Yeah, yeah. That's so interesting, dude. It's all, the playbook is right there. It's not fucking complicated, but you have to do the work and it takes a lot of time. You have to be okay with that. So your Twitter game is so entertaining. 
So that's how I found you at first. Then mm. I watch your YouTube, which is equally, you're just an entertaining guy. <laughs> I love it so much. But your Twitter game is so like, you have a unique voice. You have like a way of talking to people that's like snappy, demanding, not talking down to them, but also like, what the fuck are you doing? Exactly how you open this. So mm. is that something that evolved over time? I would love to hear your Twitter strategy start to where it is today. Yeah, so here's the thing about anyone who um, decides to give themselves a voice on the internet and get and garner attention towards themselves. Um, you're never particularly sure how you should maneuver around it. A lot of people don't actually know who they are until you have a lot of attention in front of you. Um, I was, I've always been like I am. And when I was just starting, I wasn't really sure how to do it until I would like, for instance, making that first video in that course and there was good feedback on it. So it was like, Oh, as weird as it sounds, like, oh, people like me. That's encouraging. It's like, okay, I'm going to lean into more of who I already am in the first place. And then it just kind of expands out from there. So you're, you're, you're never, you're, you're, always, you're always very shy. And this is actually why people never make content online is they're scared of people being mean in the comments. And everyone wants to believe that's not correct. It's like, oh, no, it's just a lot of time. No, you're scared of mean comments. However, the way to solve mean comments and not care about mean comments because people will say just don't care and it's like well you do care so how do you solve that problem let me give you an analogy have you ever gone to a club alone yes yes okay so what what happens when you when you walk into a club alone you are not particularly loud you're not drawing attention to yourself now compare this to when you walk into a club with 20 people and you have two tables a bunch of girls you guys, you guys got bottles coming out. You are very loud. And to gather attention towards, your, towards yourself, that is risky, right? So like primarily, like if you're very loud in the savannah, like things are looking at you and they could harm you and other humans as and well. And you look vulnerable. Yeah, you, you're vulnerable. You, there's just more people watching you. So why is it that when you walk in with a bunch of people, you're very loud, but when you're by yourself, you're not? You're because more, you, because because you have people with you, you're more you can, defensible. Yeah. Yes. So this is why, in order for you to not be scared about the mean comments, you have to have people who are on your side. Now the problem when people walk onto social media, they forget about the social part. The social part is gathering a network and having people who like you and who are on your side and literally making friends. So when I go post stuff on Twitter. I very regularly get people who say dumb shit on the comments and the same thing on YouTube. However, if someone does that, like if they're in client ascension, for instance, and they start doing this and they get a mean comment, what happens, I tell them to do this. If you get a mean comment, screenshot it, put it in the Slack chat, and we're going to make fun of them. <laughs> and you will... <laughs> and you are immediately going to feel so much better. And then they do it and they're like, oh, wow, yeah, this is fine. That is because I awesome. walked into the club with 20 people. Yeah, that's so fucking funny, dude. So <laughs> I like that you just like literally have a system where if someone has a mean comment, you have like your tribe. It's a real problem. <laughs> it it's is, like, that's bro. the thing. And I I'm like telling them, I was like, if you post content, you're going to make more money, but you're not going to post content because of this problem. You, so just, let's unlocked, solve it. you just unlocked Twitter for me because yeah. I've had a really, like, I've really struggled with Twitter the last year. And it's because I'm not like engaging with anybody on the platform regularly. I'm mm -hmm. just like trying to provide value, make a post like a robot. Mm -hmm. And so of course no one's going to like start feeling like a reason to reply. <laughs> but it's so funny to have like a Discord community where if someone says something mean to you, you say fucking yeah. bully him. Yeah, <laughs> like literally him. bully him. <laughs> it, it just sol it solves awesome. the problem immediately. That You have no idea how simple that is, but how much that just unlocked in my brain. It's, it's, it's a simple solution and it objectively works 100% of the time. So how did you start your Twitter from scratch though? Um, what I did was, I actually have a video of this on YouTube. It's very, very, it's like 35 minutes and it's, it's called Twitter masterclass. Um, what you do is you got to pick like 30 to 100 people who you actually enjoy consuming their stuff and comment on their stuff. And what you're trying to do here is make them friends with you. Because all the networking happens in the DMs where it's like, dude, you should join this like group over here. That's what happens to me, dude. Um, I was trying to pierce into it because you're not going to succeed. You're not going to be accepted into a marketplace unless the people who are already dominating the marketplace accept you. That's a really good point. So what happened was I made, you, basically you have to prove competence to a group of people, but I was at zero. Right? I started an account from zero. So how did I get accepted into a group? I made this thread one time and it popped 
off. It was the ultimate display of competence. So what I did was, cool thing about Twitter is if you comment, if someone comments in a post, it immediately boosts it back to the top of people's timeline. Yeah. So, and if you comment back, it boosts it again. So what I did was I said, made a thread. I go, reply to this tweet with a niche and I will tell you how to scrape their email addresses. Ooh, that's really smart. Dude, and I got, and at that point I was at like maybe 800 followers. I got like 500 comments on it of people just, here's my niche. And I would, I would post a video of how to do it. Use this software app and then take the data over here and enrich it like this. And then, and then you can send it over here and then you can make a cold email campaign like this. And I sat there, I think it was like eight hours. It was all day I was working this thread and big accounts were commenting too. And they were like, dude, this is like really smart. And what happened this is very interesting. One of the guys messaged me, he goes, hey, we want to invite you to this private group. I was like, cool, join the private group. Now I'm in. That was it. And then you probably met some really important people there that yes. snowballed into other groups that you were invited to. Yes. And now you're part of the in crowd. Yes. Huh. And, and, and now like three years later, I'm, I'm, I'm the biggest one from that yeah? group. Yeah. Well, good job. Yeah. They're, they're all, they're all the really man. good guys. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's I, think, I think Dan Cove is in that group. I'm pretty sure. I think most people want to sell courses. Like, I think that's like a pretty well-known thing that courses make a lot of money. Half the people don't because they're scared of their reputation getting burnt. But being able to sell a course kind of is a right that you, like you said, you have to put the skill in first. You have to prove the competence. You have to learn that skill. You have to prove that you can get results. Then you make the course. And so do you think that that is like the, like I view this as like the new way to bootstrap a business. It's like, instead of going to a VC and raising a million dollars, it's like, get a skill, then use that skill to create an agency, then start that agency, take that money, make a course around that and then sell them into a software. Yes. So do you think that's the path that like, I just don't know if we grew up in like this phase where we saw Alex Becker do that. We saw Ty Lopez kind of teaching that and we saw Sam Ovens teaching the consulting part. And that's like just our niche little industry like strategy or is that something that like universally like is the way business is going right now? So I think, um, I think the problem we experience and we can't fully conceptualize it until, un, until we're a, a little bit older and we'll kind of know in about 10 years. Um, you, you, you are the market. So like, for instance, what do you have, like a quarter million on YouTube right now? Something like that? 400, but yeah. Yeah, 400. So what will happen is in, in two years, you probably have like three mil. It, it, the rate with which you grow will accelerate. I'm at like 13 and a half thousand right now. Maybe in a year, I'll have 100,000. In 10 years, if you still exist, you are the market. So like what you have done becomes what is objectively correct. You can't conceive of that now because it, it's, it, it's, it, it seems so new to you. So when we think of this funnel where it's like agency, then course, then software, it's like, it's got, like not a lot of people have done it. Like you've done it, I've done it. It's, it's like experiment. And now we're here uh, relegating propaganda to the <laughs> 200,000 people who are watching this. That's such a good vocabulary. Um, um, <laughs> some percent of them are going to follow that precisely because there's there's two categories of people who, who, who are going to resonate with this right now. One is the person who actually is an expert, has accomplished many things, and they don't want to make a course because they don't want to ruin their reputation. One, people will buy a course from you. Two, they will like the course. Three, it will 100% grow your business on the back end, right? Second is the kind of person who doesn't have the skill yet, and they're like, okay, now I understand the long-term play. So, and they play the long-term game, and then they do it. And then, like, probably, it might, in, it might really actually be, like, five years, there might be, like, a thousand people who have watched this video who do precisely what we have instructed them to do, and they also become the market. And then, now people start making books on this strategy. Mm -hmm. Like, the, the, it's going to be called some shit, like, the long-term <laughs> new market play or some, some, some shit like that. And that's going to be the strategy. That's going to be, so Russell Brunson has this thing right now. Here's the linchpin, right? Mm -hmm. Someone's going to put some unique mechanism name on this strategy and they're going to sell it to other 20 year olds. Or I mean, Hormozzi's basically just taking Russell Brunson's playbook in a way. Yeah. You, do like, you, you, very you, similar, but you, it's like, that's the game. You know, it's so funny. So um, if you, if you, if, if you go in some Russell Brunson ads, You'll, you'll see something, this guy's trying to copy Alex Hermosi. I'm like, that's so funny. <laughs> it's just very ironic. But I'm trying to be like, I, my vision is like, try to be like the Alex Becker that Alex Becker was for me and mm -hmm. Sam Ovens. Like, those two really impacted my way Yeah, you thinking. literally, literally, this is, th this is actually the play. You sell and speak to a past version of yourself at all times. Mm. That's what happens. 
that's my YouTube philosophy is like, whatever I learned, then I go on YouTube and speak it immediately. Say, mm-hmm. this is what I'm figuring out. This is what's working. This is what we're doing. Video. Then execute three months. Then new thing on YouTube. Mm-hmm. I'm just always doing, always teaching. It's just a perfect cycle. And hopefully it's helpful for people. Dude, you know what I'm doing right now? I was kind of talking about it earlier. Um, I So I have a bunch of hyper edited, nice, pretty thumbnail videos and your stuff is really good. You just have the, the, the vicinity to- Video was my first skill, like my agency. So yeah, yeah, yeah. when I took the title open that makes course. Sense. Yeah. That makes sense. I am, I, I believe that I don't have that skill. What I do have is I can sit here on a rant for 30 straight minutes. Mm-hmm. Have you ever watched Myron Golden? Yeah. Okay, I love this guy. And a lot of people love this guy as evidenced by the fact that every single video he puts out, it gets like a quarter million views. It's so good. And it's so good in the fact that I'm speaking about it right now, right? It, 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 it was it was remarkable enough for me to remark of it right now. Word of mouth. Right? What is he doing? There were precisely zero edits on his videos and he just sits there in front of a crowd and he actually films in Tampa and I go live and watch him record sometimes and he just orates to a crowd for 30 straight minutes uninterrupted. I can also do that. Mm-hmm. You have very good editing skills and the, the ability to produce and maneuver things and such a, like very good storytelling. Your video is very good, obviously, because they do so well. My edited videos don't do well because the essence of it, like the, the, the essence of the editing, like I have an editor, it isn't there. The essence of your editing is there. However, when I don't edit videos and I just raw dog a rant <laughs> for 30 Dude, minutes, precisely time. zero thumbnail, <laughs> yeah. the essence is there. Yeah. And this is the problem with people who they, like when they start content marketing, they're st- they start posting content on the internet and they still haven't found that voice like we were just talking about. What they're doing is they're producing things with no essence. And it can only have essence if you're leaning into exactly who you are in the first place. You get it. This is exactly, I call this congruence. Mm-hmm. And it's like, do people have first impressions? And if they look at you in three seconds, what do they think you do? And if that first impression matches how you're coming off, the style of your format, the background that you're in, how you talk, then you have the ability to send higher than anybody. Mm-hmm. But if you're trying to tell people that you're like a super talented software engineer, but you look like a supermodel, frat jacked, or frat boy jacked guy, like Mm -hmm. it just won't work. Even if you have the knowledge, it won't work because it doesn't match what they have the image. That's why I laughed when you said propaganda. This is so funny. So like for the software company, so there's there's a bunch of different personas that we're trying to sell to, right? So I'm trying to sell to the people who are already existing in our funnel of our purchase or info products, trying to sell it to my YouTube audience, trying to sell it to my my Twitter audience, and I'm trying to sell it to larger companies. And I make different funnels for each of these. suit and tie. (laughs) That's literally what I was just going to say. When I make it for those people, I put on a button down. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. I might put a jacket on because that's the persona I need to exert. And this is also why you see a lot of e-com brands, they make ads with people of different races and different mm-hmm. genders. Because it, it, it literally hits people that People like market. to buy from someone that's like them. Yes. And it has to match. And so if you don't look like what the ideal stereotype of what you're selling, it's not going to work as well. It might mm-hmm. not work at all. Mm-hmm. I think that's a really interesting thing that people don't really talk about. So I'm glad you've identified that. I kind of learned that through video, like studying Hollywood movies, like even like making the camera below you makes you come off more powerful. But if you want to be a relatable friend, you go be a Heza style, wide camera lens above looking down. It's like you're just happy go lucky yeah. friend. There's all these like little camera tricks that really teach you that that matters of implying what you're all about. You want to know something weird? Hit me. I've, I've, I've filmed a lot of stuff. I've, I've filmed a lot of ads. I've, I've bought a lot of ads. When I make videos with clean shoes on, they do better. Are they in the shot? No. So you just feel different. You just feel different. It matters. Yes. And you wear nice clothes. They're newer clothes. It works better. Mm-hmm. Every time. Again, because there's just, this goes with Twitter too. You can sit here and schedule a bunch of posts out. You can say the same thing. It doesn't perform as well unless you thought of it right there. You inject it into the ether right there. It's like a, I 100% agree with that. And it's almost like a relevance in the market. Like how on the pulse are you of what is interesting right now? Because something that worked a month ago could completely flop just because people like scratch that itch. They feel like they've solved that in their mind and carp- like put it in a compartment and tucked it away. There's, there's, some, there's something about it. Just the way, like the energy of which you click the post button and people could say, oh no, it's wrong. No, I'm right. I'm it's correct. It's like what you're, the information that you're flowing in that morning that inspired yes. this message. Other people probably took that same energy and you articulated exactly what they were feeling in that moment. Mm-hmm. That's like intuition. Yes. See, this is a totally different subject, but I'm going to talk about it because I think about it. This is where alpha males on 
Twitter and alpha males in general, they don't have this aspect of thinking. They think it's like brute force, all about how hard you work, put the hours in and it's done. Where as you evolve, you kind of gain back this intuition of like spirituality or not spirituality, but like in the universe and just like, there's this energy. It's so bizarre. Dude, this is so funny. There's like, there's like a 300 to a thousand accounts of like Roman statues who are like, <laughs> yeah, the sigma. How, how sigma male energy talking to, and like, like, put in a bunch of tweets, uh, five ways to seduce a women thread. And it's like, and then they'll like DM me, but hey bro, you have any closer spots open at your business? It's yeah. just like, you are so lame. It's like <laughs> selling, selling a Gumroad $17 PDF. You're like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, like, what is this weird hustle? It's like, they just look on the outside and like, okay, step one, copy, step two, copy without mm. understanding the physics of it. I always view it's like people, there's entrepreneurs that try to do math. They try to just like solve the equation at looking at someone's business on the outside or people who actually understand the physics of like how the actual underlying seven skills we talked about move together and mm. you have to study physics or else you're just gonna it's not gonna be long term and so i think you understand the physics of the saw dude you know what i was thinking about i i i don't understand how anybody on the planet could fail an algebra class now let me tie this I, into I, I know what you're about to say yeah i agree there there's happening. like five rules and it's the same rule as every single time i don't know how you it's, it's uh, pem dash that's it every <laughs> single every single Algebra equation that you're going to get. It's PEMDAS. It's the same thing every time. Now it's the same thing with business. It's because it's, it seems very complicated until you have a vast array of capabilities and you, and you acquire minimum viable competence and all these skills. And it's like, oh, this is the same thing every single time. I think it's just coming down to the desire to want to do it. Like, I think that people that failed math classes because they were told that in one class, PEMDAS, but not like internalizing what each word means, memorizing it, and then also being able to see it and then practicing it. They just didn't want to do that. They just want to scroll TikTok. They just mm -hmm. wanted to go play Call of Duty at home. And so instead of actually, but that's like an internal intrinsic motivation. You have to be intrinsically motivated to want to do these things. And then if you kind of have the mind shift set of saying, I want to be a top performer. And I, so therefore I will do whatever top performers do to become that. And then start asking yourself, okay, is this something a top performer would do? Yes, then I have to do it. And you kind of just define that principle of willing to work that way because you want that result. That was a, one of the guests I had to define that, describe it that way. The, 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 there, there's too many people who think they're not smart, who actually are, are hyper intelligent. So you are an input output machine. And if you want to pass an algebra class, all you need to do is, or pass an algebra test, all you need to do is study for five hours of the algebra test. Okay. You want a $10,000 per month business. All you need to do is study each individual skill for an hour a week, each five hours a week. It, it's, it's, it, it can't not work. And I've been working on something like this. I'm, I think I'm going to make a YouTube video on this and I'm going to call it the impossible to lose protocol, right? And basically the premise of it is how about you just do enough input volume to, to the point where it's unreasonable that you don't succeed. And what would that entail? Okay, so one, the premises that we're going to operate upon is that one, we need to be very good at different skills. And now what are, what's the equation of acquiring money? Because it's very simple. It's you have an offer and you put traffic to that offer and then money is produced out of the ether. That's literally how it works. That's it. Get people to the page, have an offer that they want to buy, and then just do that. So if we sit here and we do outreach to for just an hour a day and you do that for you do that until it works, it's unreasonable that it wouldn't ever work. It's, it, 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 it's so simple. It's because <laughs> it, you could have, you could have like a garbage offer as well. It's like, but if you outreach and you can automate a lot of this, but if, if you get like a thousand people to see that offer, somebody's going to buy it. Like somebody's going to buy it. So how about we just do everything we can to get a thousand people to see the offer? I love how you said earlier at the very start, how it was 180 hours. I, I had that a very similar mindset to that. And so it's kind of what you're saying here. It's like, there is a set, I always thought there's a set amount of hours that it takes for me to be a millionaire. And if I'm not a millionaire yet, because I haven't put that set amount of hours in, but objectively it's, it's achievable. Other people have done it. So therefore there's a set amount of hours. And the only reason I haven't is because I haven't done it. Yes. And that was all that I was thinking when I was like 21, 22. And that's really interesting for you to say that, but I like how yours is more like of a growth upside to that too. I, I, I want to, I want to help people understand. Do it up front. I want to help people understand this. So let me ask you a question. Can you think of a new color? No. Yes. So it, it's, you're, you're functionally incapable of doing that. You cannot conceive of anything that does not exist in already on the visible light spectrum. It's impossible. You cannot create. 
Like you are not God. You cannot animate something that does not exist. However, if I ask you now, can you imagine that you have an, an eight bedroom house and seven supercars and a yacht parked out on the back? Can you imagine that? Yeah. Yes. Right. So therefore it, it exists. Mm -hmm. And there's some distribution of eventualities. There's some set of actions and maneuvering that could be navigated upon to where that does exist mm -hmm. as your reality. You can't think of the new color, but you can think of that. Therefore, you said the piece it together. does exist. You just have to piece it together. Yes. There's some input. There's some combination of things that you can do that are available to you that does result in that situation. This is what people don't understand because it's like, oh, I can never have that. Well, who said that? <laughs> yeah. Well, can you think of it? Yes. Okay. It exists. And obviously, there's some amount of work that's required in order to have it. I think this is like what people would call limiting beliefs, but I kind of think that's like a bullshit statement that people use as like an excuse. Like, oh, I got limiting beliefs. No, you just don't. You just haven't bought the right course. They, you just, you just literally, don't, you just don't have, know what exists yet. And this just goes back to it. It's like they have limiting beliefs upon each individual section of thing that, things they need to do. So we just talked about this earlier with the content gaps, marketing. Information so gaps. It's like, yeah. So it's like, oh, you want to have a bunch of YouTube subscribers and get a bunch of passive traffic that purchases your offer without any, any form of sales call? Well, a good mechanism to do that is by garnering a large audience on YouTube. Okay, so what, what are the inputs that, re, that, that are required for that? Probably posting 100 YouTube videos. Okay, so why is someone not going to post 100 YouTube videos? because of the mean comments. We already solved that problem. <laughs> right? And then it goes so to so many of these little and, things though. And then it goes to the cold outreach. Yeah. Where it's like, well, what are the problems with that? Well, it's like, well, I don't know. I don't know how to get the domains and set up the infrastructure uh, correctly. Um, I don't know what to write. Well, it's like, okay, well, how about you just go figure it out? <laughs> and, and this is, and this, and this, this so, you're, every, everyone here has heard of the higher A players. What is an A player? An A player is someone who has agency. They are able to figure something out without direct instruction. Problem exists. I will solve the problem. Dude, there's a, this is this is so this is there's a meme. It was just um is is Twitter is deja vu on on Twitter, and it was like a picture of a meteor coming down to Earth, like it's going to destroy the planet, and the caption of the tweet was, what are you doing in this situation? And he quote tweets it, and he goes, I would simply handle the problem. And I'm like, you know, that's like correct. <laughs> I mean, obviously not for the meteor, but it's like, well, what if this catastrophic thing happened? I would simply handle the problem. It's your new situation. Like, yeah. but I, I will simply solve it. And it's like, which is like correct. Like, mm -hmm. like simply solve the problem. Like you're going to figure it out. And people, people have, an, people have an, an issue and they just don't Google how to solve the problem. It's yeah. simply it's type like it into Google. Everything <laughs> is solvable. And yeah. it's, are you willing to keep going after three hours of getting like no traction until you find that one question that is like, oh, this is how you're supposed to word this one phrase. And then you type that phrase, then you find the software that you need. Let me, you give a, let, me, let me give you a technical example. So um, that script swipes funnel, like the, there, there's the, yeah, you can, you can buy the scripts then you can buy cold email masteries and upsell. What I would like to do is also one click upsell a subscription to ListKit, the software. The problem with that is ListKit operates on a different Stripe account. Mm. So I only captured the card information and processed it on one Stripe account, but I want a one click upsell to the other one. So how do I do that? I have no idea how to do that. So I need to solve this problem. So here, and, and, and I don't just want to solve the problem. I am going to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. I am going to find out what is this possible or is it not? And I am going to get an answer. So all you simply do is type it on Google and click every single link on the first on the first two pages. And it's gonna take you a couple hours, but it's like, mm -hmm. but the payoff is so, so massive for a cost that is so little. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't work, I'm gonna go to our our dev, I'm gonna to go to our CTO, I'm gonna ask him. And then, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna effectively give him a sales pitch as to why this is an extremely integral exactly. thing that gets solved right now. So now not only have I recruited my own, my, my own psychotic tendency to, to, to find the problem, I'm going to convince him how substantial of an important issue this is, that he too is going to have that same demeanor upon it, and then he's gonna do the same shit I'm doing, and we're gonna solve the problem, and we're gonna make a lot more money.
So it's either A, there's a solution for it and you make more money on your course because it's figured out. Yes. Or B, you have a new idea for a software because it's going to add a lot of value yes. to people. You have a yes. new business. Literally, yeah. yes. So it's a win-win. Yes. Like, that's really fucking funny. And I love how you're even doing sales to convince your software guy dude, to this build is, this, it. It's like you're selling is, your team. Or dude, teammate. this is so true. You need, you need to effectively give a sales pitch to everybody who you want to do anything. All the time. Right. Always I want to go to the re- this restaurant. No, I want to go to this restaurant. Okay, well, let's, let's, let's analyze this real quick. They want to go to the, this restaurant, but you want to go to this. Why do you want to go to this restaurant? Because there's some reason mm-hmm. you would prefer that one over this one. And you're not going to convince them why they should go to your restaurant unless you present that argument. This is like relationship advice. Yes. <laughs> like if it's a girlfriend. Yes, you need to sell everybody on everything. Okay, so let's just go back to your course and like what you do and give, try to give, because honestly, I think motivational stuff like that actually does really well and people really like it and it's really helpful. And I think you articulated things so well, but I do want to go back to your actual businesses that you're running. Um, one, so you're basically, you made this course, was it $500 from the get-go? When you no, it? I started it so low. I think I, I, I think I launched it at like $17. Nice. So tell me why... Tell me those progressions and how it got to 500. Because I was not aware of um, precisely how much economic force it would result in. So let me mm-hmm. give you, for instance, um, if you uh, the thing about having a $17 course is that a shit ton of people will buy it. And then what I what I did, which was worked so stupidly well, is I would never run discounts ever. I would run scarcity campaigns that the price was going up. So what was happening is, and, and I played with it a lot. The price raise had to be like nearly, it had to like nearly double for it to really ram. So it would go from like 17 to like 30 or something like that. And I would do this many times and I tried, but then I tried it from like 30 to 45, but that didn't work very well. So I went from 45 and then it was like 75 and I like played with this a lot Mm. and I always knew if I, when I raise it, I can't ever put it back down because I'm never going to devalue it. So I always kept it very low because I always wanted to bank those. Like, dude, I'd do it and it would just make like 20K in a day. And I was like, all right, cool. That's like- just A cold yeah. email. You'd yeah. send an email to your list basically. No, and Twitter. So you just announce it. Yeah. Okay. I was just, I, and dude, I'd do this like countdown thing where it'd be like, I, I'd make the tweet and then like every hour, but like it's gone. Like <laughs> three more hours, hours left. Yeah. And then yeah. like, dude, it would get like 30 minutes. So it'd be 29, 28, 26, 25, 20, and just- it, it would just, be more every time. Yeah, you, every so single time. Yeah, it was it, like the closer you got to ram the ram traffic into that. Interesting. Gym. So then, did you add new like to announce the price? Yes, I'd justi- add more stuff. So you, to yep. justify the price range, you'd be like, because we're adding this new yep. section. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, this it's exact- added right now, but this, okay. I'm, I'm I'm raising this in 24 hours. Yep. Wow. Okay. And so then eventually you got to 500. So what was the jump? What was the price right before 500? Well, what happened was, um, we 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 partnered up with. I partnered up with these dudes, Andre, Christian, and Dan, who are a very integral part of the business. They're also involved in the list kit. It literally nothing could operate without those three guys. I want to just give them a shout out. I want to say shout out to having partners. Yes. My partner does everything. Yes, 100%. So um, what happened was we figured let's launch a high ticket coaching program. One, because it it can make a lot of money. Two, because we can definitely get these people results. And people were specifically asking for it. So like, what's the best way to sell something? It's to sell them exactly what they asked for. So we decided to do that and we launched that and all of the traffic and effort started being pushed towards client ascension. What is client ascension? Client ascension is a coaching program. Coaching program. Yes, How coaching, much is consulting. It? It's $10,800 for six months. $10,800 for six months. Mm-hmm. And you are just giving them more tailored advice based on what's in the yeah, course? Yeah, dude, it's it's wildly extended. It's not just cold email. It's, it's about content, it's about sales. We, it's your whole mind. Basically. Yeah, like yeah, you're getting, right. are they getting, okay. So sorry. I just, everyone says coaching and I, in the world, I always don't really understand coaching consulting as much as like you think I should. Mm-hmm. So they, you have these $500 email course mm-hmm. and then you're, they're going to go into list kit just by taking that. But on the very top end of your vertical integration is your coaching program. Mm-hmm. What is the sell on that? It's like, you're just going to get more tailored advice. What are the set? deliverables. Yeah. So basically the angling around it is, um, you're going to build a lead gen system. You're going to build a conversion system. You're going to build a sales system. You're going to build a scaling system. So effectively, is it more courses like pre not courses, but pre-recorded there are, videos? There are videos inside of it, but it's really, it's 18 coaching calls a week. Mm. You have 
you get like a private channel with all of us and all of the people who are teaching you inside of it. And dude, we'll do shit like, oh, you need a zap built out or some kind of automation built out. Fine, here, we'll just make it for you. We're like, record your sales calls and we're gonna, we're gonna review them. So it's all implementation. Yeah. yeah. It's just sold implementation. It's, it's very, it's very hands-on. It's very extreme, the degree of- Is it a Discord get. or is it a- No, circle? it's on Slack, bro. I, I'd rather kill myself Slack. than use Discord. Yeah. I'm a big Discord guy. But yeah. Slack with the integrations makes a lot of sense. So how much, how many hours would you say a week you're spending in there? In it? 15. Is it worth it? To On you? it? 60. Okay. Okay. So 15, like you are actually showing face, typing in the chats and doing calls. How many calls are you on yourself? I am on two a week. Two, two a direct week. calls. Are like, they the same concept or are you switching up? Like, are you talking no, to people? I, I specifically talk about offers and strategy. Does it get repetitive? Like, do you get no, tired? No, because everyone's, everyone's unique and like the market is always dynamic. So here's the thing. So it's like, you can't, like, if you make an offer, what the reality of the situation is, say, like, you make an agency or you, you make some kind of done-for-you service or, or, like, you have your own coaching program or something like that. Your positioning of that is going to have to change by necessity because of the market within six months. It always is dynamic. So it's effectively because I'm, dude, I'm always scheming. I'm always, like, <laughs> clicking on people's ads, opting into everything. Too, and I'm, like, too. reading 100% of their sales pages. And something people don't do is, dude, if you get an ad... And then you get it again and again and again and again and again and again. That offer is cooking. It's cooking. And people do not really understand this because they've never run like high spend ad campaigns before. And it's like, dude, this is like, and I'll show it to people and be like, let's break this down exactly what's happening here. What are the deliverables of what they're getting? What is the funnel? What is happening? Like, what's the service they're offering? What, what's the angle? The priming, the copy? Yeah, the framing. What's the, what's the whole, what is the ad saying? Who's that targeting? And it's like, let's, let's like break this down. And then if someone has some offer, it's like, okay, well, you have some specific set of skills. I know this offer over here is cooking. How about you take this positioning and change yours because you have the capability to be able to do it and then just inject that into your business. And now that's your offer and just playing with the maneuvering of it just continuously all the time. And this is the problem. Dude, it's so funny. There's so many people who, who they'll, they'll join and then they'll leave and then they just like never grow ever. It's like, dude, because you're not paying attention to the market, bro. It's always dynamic. It makes sense. I'll like literally scroll Instagram just for the ads. Like I'd way more enjoy just like, mm -hmm. what is their hook? I wish there was offer? a plugin to only see ads on, that would be so, on your phone. That would be yeah, really cool. That'd be great. Or at least just like sourcing from the Facebook ad library of like your niche, just like yeah. maybe like fake it. Cause yeah. I definitely don't want to be, so be spending people's money way faster. Mm -hmm. But that is really interesting. And something you'll note though, and this, this was very interesting, is um, people think um, like particularly in business, they think 80-20 is correct, but it's not. It's literally 99 to one. What I mean by that is I get the ads of like eight people regularly. What does that tell you? It tells you that they're winning because all, all uh, for everyone who's not aware, all advertising on social media platforms works in an auction system. What that means is if you bid higher than another person, this is all automatic, but if your budget is higher and you keep the ad campaigns on, you're going to bid higher and you're going to beat everyone for the real estate. So if you keep seeing that person, they are bidding so astronomically higher than everybody else that you only see them. And if they can afford to bid higher, it's, yeah. it's, it's not that their offer is like a little bit better than someone's off, someone else's. It's so substantially better that they win all of the business, all of it. That's Peter Thiel's like, you want to own a monopoly. Yes. And that's Dan Kennedy's, whoever can pay the most for a customer wins. Yes. That's very interesting. What he's basically saying is that if you have a better offer, meaning you have a better combination of add to your product being sold and however much that is and the profit margin is, you're making more money that you can then pay more on ads to then get more customers. So you're going to be able to monopolize that entire what he called real estate on the Instagram feed. Because since you are making more money per ad to your competitors, you're going to spend more, which means you're going to be prioritized over And this them. goes back exactly same to what I was talking about earlier, where it's like you can you can hear something from a bird's eye view. Oh, you spend $5,000 to acquire a customer. It sounds easy until you're on day eight and you haven't acquired the customer yet, and then you stop the ad campaign, right? So it, go, it goes back to the same thing where I can tell people, make, make a self-liquidating funnel 
with a low ticket product and make all of your money on the back end. And then they sit here and they're liquidating at like 90%. So they spend $10,000, they make 9,000 back and they're like, we're just losing money on this. I'm going to turn this off. Like this isn't making any money. You didn't, again, you did not follow the directions. You have not allowed the conversion cycles of these people to elapse, let alone have you not done sufficient enough outreach to your own customer list or sent enough emails or or existed in front of them with enough frequency to get them to even convert on the next offer in the first place. A lot of these people don't even know you have a higher up offer. Dude, I was listening to a Grant Cardone interview and he said, this is permanently etched into my mind. He goes, he was talking about like other advertisers and other businesses and he's like, yeah, you can make all these cute ad creatives. You won't beat my frequency. Just let that sink for a second. You won't beat my frequency. For everybody who is not aware of what frequency means, when you send ads, you have how many, what your reach is, that's how many individual unique humans who have seen it. And then you have the impressions, that's how many times you have appeared, right? If you divide the reach by the impressions, you get your frequency. So what happens is if you have a, a weekly frequency of seven, the average person has seen your ad seven times. Grant Cardone is probably sitting here with the weekly frequency of like, 14. He definitely does for me. I see shit all the time. And it's so true because if you, if you, if you ask, if you were to take like a bunch of people on money Twitter and you ask them cold email, who'd you think of me? I have the account cold email wizard. You think of Daniel Fazio. I have with 132,000 humans on this planet. I have permanently etched the word cold email to my face for them. If you, if they ever think about cold email ever in their life, I am the default option. That level of frequency, you can't lose when the frequency is that, that substantial. It's impossible. And it, it, it goes, it literally just goes back to that impossible to lose protocol. Where it's like, just, just make them know you exist. Because people, oh, I said, I said, this person saw me one time, like, they'll remember me. No, they will not. No, they will not. Just that, that, that's probably the most fundamental reworking I've ever, in a singular sentence, you can't beat my frequency. And I'm like, fuck, I can't. But now I will. So is this going to come into like retargeting on top of your email sequences, yeah, well. on top of your, in your community, mm -hmm. like all of those different touch points as well? Do you want to know something? Another sentence that it was permanently etched into my mind. I think this was like two and a half years ago. I was listening to a podcast by Taylor Welch. He goes, he goes, no single person enters my funnel without being spoken to. And what, what he was referring to that is if you say, say he has a, like a low ticket product and you purchase a low ticket product for him. You have to put your name, email, phone. Every single person who enters that funnel is getting called multiple times over weeks long period. No singular human will enter this funnel without being spoken to. And I was like, dude, that's so true. So <laughs> we, we had, we, we had an event. Um, we had, we, we, we got a bunch of the team, the client essential team to fly out to Tampa. We had a bunch of our clients. It's 125 people. We get a yacht, which was cool. Um, but our two setters were there. They were there on, on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. They left on Sunday. Now on Friday, I go and I'm looking at our ad campaigns, right? And we were booking like $80 calls. I go look in the ad campaigns and it shoots up to like $220 a call. And I'm like, what, what is this? And then I look up and like my two setters are sitting here and I'm like, that makes sense. They're not being called in the funnel to, to, to the point that the, the, that role is so integral that it reduces the ad cost by more than half. Mm. The, like, that, that, that works that is like so in your face. well. Yeah. That, that is the difference between me being able to outbid everyone like, it, it's so that important. And it's like, dude, that's insane. And it's like, now, it, uh, that, that was just a certification that what Taylor said on that podcast. I was like, oh, that's, that's objectively correct. There's some, there's some things that are just correct. And like, I, I, I like to bank these things. Like, I, I, just, I, I just have like a bank of things that are like, correct. I, I do that now. <laughs> that is one of them. Like, 
every single person who enters your funnel will be contacted. So you're running ads straight to client ascension. Yeah, I send ads a lot of places. Do you run ads for your course? For your five hundred dollar um, course? We do not run ads to that. We run ads to a lo to the low ticket funnel that upsells to that. So the scripts. Mm -hmm. So you run ads to twenty dollar script. You're basically trying to break even. And that's where you make the profit. Yeah, um, we're trying. Yeah, we're trying to get. A how one do you to send one. people to? You're trying to get one to one for the scripts. Mm -hmm. How do you send people into the client ascension? So remember, I was telling you about like that five day thing right there, where I'm like, I'm giving, I'm putting the, the offers course. So like, what is my objective here? My objective here is to because, uh, you're selling to cold traffic, but the only re, the, the only way someone is ever going to purchase something that is ten thousand eight hundred dollars or like two thousand dollars a month for client ascension is is they, they have to know, like, and trust you. So what is my objective once you have purchased this? Is to accelerate how fast you know, like, and trust me. What's the best way to do that? Is to give you such an extreme amount of value that you, you feel indebted to me. So when I put people through those five days of telling them about offers and giving them examples of real offers that have worked. What are the five days? Is it the $500 when they buy the $500 course? No, when they buy the low ticket. Okay. You're going to get it whether you buy the, the cold email mastery or not. Okay. And the, so once they buy the load ticket, they're getting five emails. Yeah. And they're, they're like 30 minute videos each. Oh, yeah. so it's like a whole on like yeah. DSL drip campaign yes. in a way. Yeah. And those, it, and those are yeah. in the email mm -hmm. and then it's just a link to a landing it's page. A, it's a link to a page. Yeah. And then from there, that's selling client ascension immediately out the gate or at the end. Okay. So, okay. But that, that whole sequence is for client ascension. Yeah. Only. It is effectively it's a, not referencing the $500 course at all. No. Do you have emails going out to sell the course as well? Nope. So if they opt in, buy the $20 template, don't buy the course. It's just hope they come back, but immediately trying to go to client ascension. Yeah, this is such a micro optim optimization that I just don't care. Where people are like, well, you should segment it like this. I'm like, I don't care. Okay, that, no, I get it. I get it. So Because you could probably make more money on the client ascension anyways. Mm -hmm. you, you already know they have interest, so they can just... And they're getting called. And, and in theory, you're taking away more pain with client ascension. And even then, after they buy it and they get those five days, it's like you're on my email list. And what yeah. I do on the email list, and then is, you can just yeah, I'm yeah. not I'm not like hard pitching on this email list. And this is actually shout out Nick Verge because he help, he helps me with the copywriting of it. And what I'm trying to do on the email list is, and even with YouTube as well, and with those videos, is build a parasocial relationship. If anybody doesn't know what a parasocial yeah, relationship say, is, is <laughs> it's 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 when um. So you have 400,000 YouTube subscribers. If you walked around here in the city and someone came up to you and they go, oh my God, Brett, like I, I've seen your videos. Like I like them so much. You have no idea who they are. They love you. It's a parasocial relationship. Gotcha. They love you. You don't know they exist. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to build as many people as is conceivably possible who have a parasocial relationship with you because only people who have the relationship with you will purchase it. The best example of this is Iman Godzi. Dude, I was with, I was with a girl. And she was like, we're talking about like marketing stuff. And she was like, do you know Iman Godzi? And I was like, yes, I know. I know Iman. He's like, he, I like his videos. And I'm like, that's so interesting. <laughs> like, how do you know him? I was like, what? His Instagram is popping. I know. That, girls uh, love Instagram. Yeah, yeah, bitches obviously love Iman. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Iman. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to see if I can go a podcast without bringing him up. Because he's just like killing it right well, now. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll put that into perspective. The raw resonance. Mm -hmm. Like the, just, just the sheer resonance is like, and you, you hit resonance. We were just talking about this, the essence of the, of, of the way you're able to maneuver around this production. Mm -hmm. Now with mine, my videos that perform significantly better than everything else are just me just orating, yelling, just yelling. <laughs> ranting, yeah. it's like, that's just the essence I hold. And it's like, everyone has some kind of essence that they Luke, can exert. Luke is, Luke Belmar is really good at this. Yes. He's very good at it. He's very, very good at it. It's like this uh, concept of like a synthesizer. Like that's what we are in the make money online YouTuber world. It's like, yes, you talk about this one specific business model, but you could pull Iman or Luke or any of us out of like that world and say you're in a new world now. And the skill is their ability to synthesize like complicated information and explain to the person why it's good for them. Mm -hmm. Like that really is what the content creator role is. Same with you. You're just taking all these different pieces and saying it in a very passionate, interesting way. And that is, at the end of the day, your skill, I would say. It's very interesting to think about it that you way. No, it's also very interesting. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of the engagement, or uh, say for this is going to go on YouTube, if anything were to be clipped at all, it would be the analogies I've made today or the stories I've told. Mm. Right? So, like, for instance, what, 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 what could conceivably, conceivably be clipped here and actually perform well? It would be what I said about the colors. It would be about 
Um, what else do I talk about? Any kind of analogy I made. That 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 is that is what would work. And references of other stories. Or references yeah. or just comparisons between t- these two things. Dude, this is like so good. I do this. This is effectively every single email I write. Is I talk about. I'm trying to d- explain something to somebody. I have to make an analogy in the real world, or like the club thing I was just talking about. That blew your mind. Mm-hmm. Where it was like, that's so right. Like that, that makes it make so much sense. Where it's like, yes, I will not make noise if I walk into a club alone. It's like, it's like, that makes so, it's, it's, it's remarkable. What is it? It's notable. The definition of remarkable means it's worthy of remark. <laughs> but it, it, it <laughs> hit you so down, much yeah. that you would mark it remark down. of it in the yeah. future. Like yeah. Myron Golden's videos are so remarkable that I made a remark of them. Like at that. So yeah, that's a very interesting word to break down because mark is the word marking, mm-hmm. like marking it down. So you would remark because it's so, Mm -hmm. it's worth repeating. Yeah, that's so weird. That's so interesting. So cool how words come up like that. But okay, so back to your business because I got a million questions. I go back. So I figured out your funnel. I understand it's low ticket. You'll run ads. You'll do organic. You'll even do organic straight to the $500 offer. You did scarcity, like genuine scarcity, but using price hikes instead of like closing, which I think is much better. Mm -hmm. I'm probably going to implement now. Oh, so well, you should copy it. Yeah, Yeah, cool. Thank you. (laughs) That's a benefit of having the podcast. But then from there, you're immediately trying to client ascension through a five part videos, five, vi- five videos, right? Five like long ass VSLs. And even, and, and even but then, they're all providing value. Mm-hmm. And then the fifth one, it's like a sale if they want it. It's there mm-hmm. and it's not aggressive. So then from there, they're in client ascension. You spend like two calls a week. You said a week, right? That's me personally. Yes. There's, there's 18 total. Yes. And then you'll do like an event and there's a community helping people if they have actual specific questions and you sell all the implementation. So that really is the business. I want to go to software because I'm a software guy. I'm in my software journey. And I think this is like a really cool system of integrating skill, course, software. Use the course to bootstrap your software and then vertically integrate it. So if you were not using the same pipeline for ListKit, that makes sense how it works. And now you're at the 100K, you're probably like at the point where you're at like your organic reach is already pretty much, they all know about ListKit, they all know the offer. And so if you want to grow this to like a billion dollar company, you're going to have to find different inbound, outbound strategies. How would you go about that? Or how have you thought about going about it? So I'll explain what I'm doing right now. So um, our lowest package on ListKit is $79 a month. We will still allow people to do demos. We will still put a salesperson on mm-hmm. there and give them a demo. Just for even 80 bucks a month, not enterprise or anything. Yes, because like, it, 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 here's the thing. When you try very hard for every individual sale, you always end up better. So what I mean by that is a lot of people, they want to coast along where it's like, oh, I have a bunch of leads over here, but I just don't feel like it. Okay, well, guess what? If you tried harder for every individual one, you're going to get them in. Now, what happens when you get a customer in and they like the product? When someone likes somebody something so much, they cannot help themselves but to remark of it to their friends, right? So, like the 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 amplification of getting one person in is actually tenfold on a long enough time horizon if the product is good. That is what is obviously evidence to us now. But with ListKit, it is so good that people organically post about it on the internet. So I'm like, okay, that's, that should be an indicator to you here that you should be trying extremely hard for every individual deal. So we started with one salesperson. Um, month one, we got a second. And I think in the past two weeks, we've hired three. And we're just accelerating that continuously. Okay, now, but we need more traffic. So one, we're definitely ramping up cold emails. We're probably gonna do some LinkedIn, probably gonna do some other cold DM stuff, but we're doing ads, right? So what's my strategy with the ads? You're is- running ads to your software directly? To, to get, funnels of it. Okay, so that's the vertical I'm replicating yeah. client ascension funnels and the, ex- the exact same thing with ListKit, however, it's straight to book a demo. So what, what am I doing here? Mm. This is very interesting. That's how me. Alex Becker did it. This, this is so interesting to me. There are software companies who have a homepage or a funnel that they're directing traffic to and it doesn't have a demo. It's like- a Video or a call? A demo. Anything. Okay. <laughs> it's just, here's what it does. And there aren't even screenshots, screenshots of the interface. So every single time I've ever used a new piece of software, I'm looking for videos. I'm looking for video tutorials of it. I want to understand the thing before I purchase it. I need to know, I need to know how to maneuver around this application and what to click and how to accomplish what I'm trying to do before I purchase it. Mm-hmm. Therefore, 
what I'm doing is I'm making YouTube ads that are hitting different personas. So like if I'm trying to hit a persona of they run a sales team or they are a salesperson, what are the pain points by which I'm, uh, that I need to sell these people on? Here's the best trick of all time. You have a sales team, listen to the sales calls. Because I want to tell you about the best VSL I've ever made in my entire life. It was for our recruiting offer. This is what was getting us $80 calls booked. What I did is I asked the closers, send me all of your sales calls for this. I want to go through all of them. And what I did is I sat here for like 10 hours, 1.5x speed on all, these, on all these calls, and I had a notepad, and I would write down the questions or objections that every single person would give us. I just write it down. If it occurred again, I'd put a tally next to it. The same question happened three times. This one happened four times. This one happened eight times. Oh, basically every single person is answering this question. Okay, so why would I do that? The reason why is because when I'm in a VSL, a video sales letter for those who don't know, what I'm doing is I am having the sales conversation with the prospect already. They just happen to not be on the phone. I'm going to say what would otherwise need to be said anyway before you're on the call because I want to morph the sales call to be as close to an order taking call as is possible. So what I did was I took all of those questions, I ordered them in descending order of the frequency with which they were asked. If you do that, it just so happens mathematically that that is the exact sequence as well that they would ask it. They must know the answer to this first before they ask this, before they ask this, before they ask this. So the VSL was effectively just a headline of what the offer was. And then it was, but what about this? And now, and, and now when I present this to you, you're probably going to also have this question. And then you'll 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 have this question. I just answer the questions in descending order with which they were asked. That's what your VSL covers. That was the VSL. So you had 100 sales calls. Had them all recorded, watched them all. I didn't watch a hundred. It was was a lot. But I watched a lot. Mm -hmm. Recorded all the most common questions, ranked them by how common they were, and then just answered those in a VSL. In that exact Mandatory, watch this video before your call. Yep. And then when you get to the call, they're way more primed. Those questions are taken out, and Mm -hmm. it's more so just like, how do we get started? Because they've gone through all those questions, and that's usually the last one. Mm -hmm. So, you know... That's good, dude. I'm using that tonight. Thank you. When we were making the roadmap for ListKit, it was... um, So, we have a bunch of features that are coming out. Um, One is... One is um, a tracking pixel on your website. What it's going to do is going to analyze who's coming to the website and then you can get their email addresses. Mm. Secondarily, it's making AI lookalikes. So there was a problem in ListKit. And the problem was that people, people they want to sell their stuff. They don't know how to like functionally create a search with a bunch of manual filters to find what they're looking for. So a problem when people would churn, they would be like, the leads aren't good. And then you get them on the phone and it's like, oh no, no it's not that the leads aren't good. It's you that know. you don't know how to use the tool. put filters in correctly. Yeah. So what, what, what's, what, how do you resolve that? And the way you resolve it is one, you could just, just get people on niche. onboarding calls yeah. or you could ask them for 10 examples of their ideal clients or current customers they have, throw it into an AI and have it generate lookalikes. So huge idea. That's the function of that is to solve that problem. It's not to have AI. We are using AI to solve a very specific problem. So that's that's what that's for. Secondarily, a very common thing hmm. with the larger businesses is that they need phone numbers. Now, something to note about the people who want the phone numbers is they are very large businesses. They're the kind of businesses that would spend five thousand dollars per month on a stupid amount of data. So when we were making the roadmap, I made it very clear to everyone, phone numbers come first before AI. All, uh, all of that stuff is going to be ready in the next like four weeks too. So, but by, by the time people are watching this, it's probably already done. But I told them, because that's the thing on the sales calls. So I'm listening to the sales calls. So uh, I would buy this right now if you guys just had phone numbers. That has occurred so many times from businesses that they're so large that would spend a lot of money. And it's like, okay, we need phone numbers right now. Now, when I make the VSL, because I would prefer to sell high-value customers, because we just make more money, the first thing I would like to say is that not we have 500 million triple verified emails and 200 million phone numbers. Now it's like, oh, okay, now they're sticking around and they're going to click the ad. Where do you find these emails? Um, Very complicated maneuvering that I I am not very privy upon. Is it like... 
code on software, scraping them from like public directories, basically, or are you like purchasing them? There, uh, I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> okay, but it's it's a lot. There's the da- th- there's I, my a lot. degree. I went to college is data yeah. analytics, mm-hmm. and so like I understand yeah, this yeah. world. But I'm curious. That's just so like it's a dirty, dirty world. Yeah, we we we, yeah, we can talk about data off the camera. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, okay, yeah, cool. That's so cool. Well, it's just so fucking smart, dude. So you're basically your outbound channels right now are cold email. You're going to do LinkedIn and then you're running ads, but the ads again are kind of the linchpin style where you're selling info products and the course first straight to the software or what is the, no, the, 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 the they'll, they'll all have, they'll all have their own funnels. Okay. Yeah. So like Whiskey will have its own funnels independently and then script swipes will have its own funnels independently. Client essential mm. will have its own funnels independently. Take me through your list kit funnel real quick. So the one I'm making right now is I'm trying to find a good angling for it. And this is, this is actually a lesson for a lot of people. It's like you, you think you're going to make a funnel and it's going to rip and then it doesn't. And then like the reality of the situation is that you need to make like 30 funnels. What I mean by 30 funnels is like, there's a completely different angling that you need to for take. For every demographic. It's, 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 it's so substantial the amount, the, the amount of testing you have to do. People it's kind of like what we were talking about with clothes. Like when you're wearing clothes for different demographics, it's like if you're going for a CRM, let's say like a HubSpot, like mm-hmm. you have to talk to them differently than if it was like for mortgage lenders. Mm-hmm. It's say like find home ready buyers yes. in three seconds with yes. a list kit. Yes. And this one's, Find company, find B two B customers that need a CRM easily. With yeah. so, so you, that's what we're talking about. You're making that messaging is so different per landing page mm-hmm. and your offer formulation. And then how are you choosing which ones go with first? You you have to put so much spend through it. So like um for instance we have one right now. It's fifty free leads, but we're not giving them fifty credits in their accountant's manual. Mm. What I mean by that is they like submit a description of who they're trying to sell to, and then we will. Go, we will have someone film themselves making the list inside of ListKit, extracting it, sending them the Loom video, and then giving them the CSV file. And then a link like, hey, if you want to sign up, go here. And then mm. as we capture their phone number on the request, we're calling them, and they're inside of email sequences for the rest of time. So they keep mm. getting that. Now, I need to split test this against just giving them 50 free leads on an account. However, the problem with that that I imagine is going to happen is they're not going to know how to make the list in the first right. place. That's what necessitates the AI. Now, something that happens is, okay, well, you have the AI, so then you have to change the angling of the ads to the fact that you can make AI lookalikes. And that's the premise entirely. Right. And it might not even be that you need to give them 50 for your leads. You could just send them direct to a sign-up because they would just want to do that AI. And then we have the tracking script that will let them, that will let them um, extract the people on their site. So like, these are all angles. And like you have all these features, but the reality of the situation is that you can't sell all of them at once. You have to angle somebody in with one and then introduce them to the others. And then you have another one where it's like one angling for their larger people is the phone numbers. And that's a completely different funnel. Right. And you have to test so many of these funnels and so many different ads, and you got to like put a substantial amount of spend through it. That makes me, that just got me so hyped up. I don't know why, but I liked hearing the amount of like complexity that there was to this thought process of marketing software. Because I can imagine software without the course front end that you have, like it's not profitable on like, like you're probably, is your CAC over $80? Like cost of acquiring customer? Yeah, or, it's over there. Yeah, so, the LTV is very That's high. what I'm assuming. It's so it's very like, high. So you're definitely yeah. going in the red where we're kind of used to the info product world where you're like making mm-hmm. a profit on the first offer or breaking even. Yeah, but it's fine. That It's okay though. Because for instance, we have client ascension, we have info businesses, we have the, 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 the recruiting business and what is that's the, cash flow. Yeah. Sorry. What is the recruiting business? You so that's, that. that's so taking people from your course and placing them in a job. Yeah. We'll, we'll, what we'll do with some of the people who bought cold email mastery is they know how to do cold emails now. Yeah. And what we'll do is be like, Hey, do you want to go do cold email on a commission basis for this client? And we just charge the client a management. Where do you find those and, clients? Cold emails ads. and ads. cold email. God, most damn. of it comes. Who from is running email, your actually. marketing? Do you have a marketing partner? No, it's me. Just you. It's me. I'm you a, are I'm, ripping this, dude. Bro. I, dude, I, I, like, I ram funnels. Like, <laughs> so, and th- th- this is what just people are like, using, like, they really don't get just how much of a volume of production that is occurring, right? Because earlier, creative copy, yeah, people, monitoring budget. Earlier, we were talking about how much you make a month, five hundred thousand dollars a month, and it's like, okay, everyone's like, oh, well, dude, look, I would Good. like to make that. It's like, <laughs> you have no conceptual understanding of what is actually required to be at that level, like the the and growing it. And you have over thirty people, right? Was it you said forty-seven if you include the software? I watched an old video then. Yeah. Huh. 
Incredible, bro. I'm like really impressed. Like as a marketer, like the fact that you are conceptualizing these funnels, copy, making the VSL, getting the ad creative, copy for the ad, then coming up with the offer and then actually setting up the sales, then critiquing the salespeople, then leveraging that to optimize another funnel Dude, across it, it four businesses. How it, the fuck? It, it, it couldn't, it, it couldn't. So like I'm, I'm, I'm so front end. So like for instance, Andre, entire business will fall apart if Andre was there. It, that, that is every single operational component of the business is structured by Andre and managed by Andre. He manages all the people. He hires all the people. Dan, he manages the sales team. He hires the sales people. He does the sales management and does the reviewing of all of it. Christian operates all the cold email stuff and all the outbound stuff. I exclusively drive Marketing. Marketing. the traffic via the content and the ads. So That's you have, what I do. So you're like a team of four, four core four, partners. Four co-founders. And then for a list kit, there's a fifth who's a CTO. Gotcha. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Dude, I am so impressed. Okay, so... I've loved this conversation. Dude, I go it's forever. fun. It's I, fun. It is so dude, fun. You just got to start ramming out more funnels. Because when you, here's the thing. You can't like write some copy, film some ads and like debilitate upon it and for a bunch of time. It. So no, 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 it, yeah. no, just go now fast. Like do, write something live right now. Mm. You need feedback fast, dude. Oh, get away for the designer to design the landing page. Nope. Don't care. Throw it, throw it on a white page on ClickFunnels. If it's good enough, it'll work. So you use ClickFunnels. Mm. If, if you had to optimize, or sorry, if you had to choose one uh, lead source for list kit. If you had to only use one, what would be the funnel or what would be the traffic source? Outbound. What kind? Cold email for that. You would do so for SAS, the best one to start with is cold email. For that specific For your SAS, for your SAS, yes. Because for it, your, it, sorry, for your SAS. It is yes. because cold email works only works B2B. I'll get a, people come up, uh, hey, I sell a I saw a fitness coaching offer. Can you do cold email? <laughs> yeah. No, it's B2C. You're not, you're not cold email. You do consumer emails like yeah. that. Yeah, you don't do that. It's B2B only. It just so happens that ListKit is B2B. It yeah. just makes the most sense to do that. And do they get charged more as they get more emails? Like, is it like a pricing, yeah. like a mm-hmm. email provider? That yeah. makes a lot of sense. Okay, wow. How, what was your first month of revenue for ListKit? Month one was probably like 40. 40 grand? Yeah, first month. What was like, how did. Just can you tell me the month by month, ish? It was like forty, then 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 sixty, then a hundred, then one hundred twenty five. Has it dipped ever? No, it's it's never dipped. That's so far. insane, bro. It's and, not dipped so far. Do you think a lot of that is word of mouth? Like, yeah, and just um, dude, there's something about like just ramming your offers so hard. <laughs> Like just so stupidly hard where it's like, dude, I can make like 12 tweets a day about let's get and just film myself building a list. And you can just, just spin shit up and just like really just so unrelentingly. This is actually very interesting. When I was, um, when I had first launched Cold Email Mastery in that period in like 2020, I liked to go into the dashboard and see how much traffic versus how much revenue was made. And it was so simple to me because then I would just go up another dimension and it would be like, well, how many tweets did I make? And it was like, oh, well, on this day that I had more traffic, I tweeted more. So I'm like, oh, okay. So if I want to make $2,000 today, I have to tweet eight times. I'm just going to tweet eight times today. And <laughs> like, I just tweet eight Are times. Are you linking your offers in your tweets or is it just all in your bio? Oh, uh, no, I'll put it on the tweets. And then and underneath then, or like yeah, in the is, same tweet? If you, you should do this. If you use Hype Fury, you can schedule retweets. So you can copy the link to a tweet and then you get, you have like slots in Hype Fury. You click the little retweet button you, and then you can paste the link to the tweet and you schedule a retweet of the tweet. Mm. So I'll, if I have a good tweet, I'll retweet it like fucking 10 times. Just unretweet it, retweet it? It'll auto unretweet it. So you, it'll, leave uh. it, it, it'll leave it retweeted for like two hours and then unretweet it. Interesting. And then you just do it again like three days later. Interesting, bro. So now you just extend the resonance of it. That is so interesting. Yeah. Okay, my last, I want, I want to keep talking, but we're almost at the two-hour mark. So I want to just go ahead and cover what are all the softwares you use to operate the entire business? Internally. Internally. Okay. Um, and start, bus- go through each business. So team communication is Slack. CRM we use, for a list kit, we use HubSpot. For client essential, we use Close.com. Um, Zapier for the automations between everything. Convert kit for the email list. Um... Why? Smartlead.ai for the sending of the emails. Warming then, up or? Yeah, warming up and sending. Yep. And then we use ListKit to get our own leads for ListKit. Of course. 
Okay. Um, why close for the, for like why different CRMs? Oh, and for calling aloeware. Aloeware. What does yeah, that yeah. do? Yeah, close. We just, I don't know. We just started using okay. it. Okay. What is aloeware? It's for calling. What, like calling text. Literally, like, so like you get like a phone number mm -hmm. and then they can call from your computer. Yeah. And you, we have the setters on there and then it's just, we comes in just call. I needed that. Thank you. Aloeware. Yeah. Cool. What else? Um, click funnels for the funnels. For list kit, we always use Webflow for the funnels. That's Why? kind of that's that's kind of like um. I probably could get away with using ClickFunnels pages, but there's something about like it, it it's very it's a very proper company. We're trying to sell that. Yeah, so Webflow has like better design. It's yeah, it just looks very very professional. That's him, bro. He's obsessed with Webflow. Yeah, he yeah. won't let me, he won't let me use ClickFunnels. And we, <laughs> we we have a designer as well. Um who can just spin up a landing page so fast. And yeah. I, what I'll, I'll just give him a Google Doc of the copy. I'm like, here, just make a page that just comes back beautiful in like 24 hours. I'm like, all right, cool. Okay. Anything else you could think of? Um, like, are there any, like you said, Hype Fury for tweets. Yeah, like that's a small tweets. little one. Is there anything for like managing all the different ad accounts you're doing? Um, like, are you oh, using, High Roast. I was going to say, are you using yep, High I Roast? High, you, yeah. Dude, that's so funny because like you like can't run ads without High Roast. You would it, isn't that, that's you just can't. so crazy to me. Yeah, like how, I would never run ads without a high roast. We're probably going to clip this and use it as an ad. <laughs> <laughs> feel, feel free. You have my permission. Yeah. But I literally, any, yeah, and if anyone's clipping out there, feel free to use my stuff anytime you want. Just link, just tag me. But isn't that crazy that the company who made the ads and they have an ad tracking system in there and they mm -hmm. pixel your website and they have everything that high roast in theory has yet they are physically incapable yeah, I, of I, being accurate. I live like, in high roast, bro. Like, I, I have high roast open all the time. How is that possible? You can't run ads with that. It's just wrong. Like all the conversions there. It's just wrong. By a very How large they margin. Not fix that for seven, it's crazy. It's been so long. You have too. no idea what ads are working. What ad, you you don't know anything. Like you think, that you think that that's like one of the most important incentives for the companies mm -hmm. is to attribute more sales. Mm -hmm. Like I don't get that. Like if they the, were, the ones that are better, Google is pretty good at it. Dude, the TikTok pixel is actually very accurate. Okay, I'd hope. Which is very strange. It's probably because Facebook it's newer. pixel is very bad. They though. probably figured it out. It's like newer, and Facebook have like pounds of code on top that yeah. couldn't. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know anything about code. It just yeah. sounds like it makes sense, but mm. that's so interesting. But okay, I mean, there's the last question I always ask people is more so like, what is one genuine core belief that you had early in your entrepreneurship career that now is just like was completely wrong and that like inhibited your growth earlier? That having a successful business or being wealthy or having something that would allow you freedom was kind of like a secret club. You had to be invited to the club. You do not have to be invited to the club. You can just walk into the club and make friends with people and then you will gradually be allowed inside of the club. You have to, you, you, you have to operate under the assumption as if you, you are ordained to have this. Like, like you, you have been gifted the power, the knowledge and the capability to have precisely what you were looking for. And it, 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 it is, it is not, you are not shut out. The door is not locked. You can simply walk inside of it. I love that dude. All right, guys, Daniel Fazio, where can they find you? Uh, YouTube, Google, uh, Daniel Fazio. And on Twitter, just search up cold email wizard. The handle is black hat wizard with two D's. Okay. So that's Daniel wizard or <laughs> Daniel, wizard. Daniel Fazio <laughs> on YouTube, cold email wizard on Twitter. All right. And that's F A Z I O. Mm -hmm. But man, F-A-Z-I-O. Yep. You just helped a ton of people. I really appreciate you coming out here. This is awesome. Appreciate you, brother.